Hi, Monica. <laughs> Hi, Seth. How are you? Um, <laughs> Good. I wish you could be here. It's, it's getting exciting here. The weather's nice. I just really wanted to give you an opportunity to provide your own process and your own path here, and then specifically about this collection. I really wish I was there. Uh, when uh, Bright Moments entered in contact with me, I thought, well, that's going to be a challenge because I've never been in Mexico. And then uh, I remembered a book. It was something related to the Aztec Imperium. And uh, they thought a lot about the lakes that were under the city today in Mexico City. So my idea was, what if those flowers just were lost under the city? And now I go there and I found them. And uh, what are they now? Uh, how they changed? The name of the collection is Wonder Water. I start to look at several plant species, also a lot of uh, archaeological and ethnological studies from Prest. Panic Mexico. So I have seven different flowers, eight different palettes. I use a botanical algorithm, super formula, that's uh, a really special algorithm to modeling plants. I model them and then I started to change these uh, forms in a way that they could evolve to have a few different characteristics between them. First, schematical drawings, which was a kind of my first research. Those are also from this pre-Hispanic. I was trying to choose the flowers. I found that in the Escudo de Ayuntamiento de Ciudad de México, they represent the water like this. You see here, the water. So that's why I'm doing the water in the way I am doing. What about the difference of edition size? You know, with fragments, it was 1,024, and now it's 100. And knowing that it's going to be a much smaller, still long form, but a smaller edition size, how does that change your approach to the work? If you are dealing with a, a smaller set of possibilities, you have more space to work with details. Uh, details are hard to vary. I'm sure that some species are not going to happen in, in some colors or it will be very difficult to get. <laughs> What's the feeling like when you design a, a trait or an attribute in the long form work that never shows up? Uh, it's fun to think about it actually, you know, because the trait is there, is in the code. So if you are reading the code or if you put the code on your own computer and you do it, maybe you could, you know, trying to figure out a way to find this one. I know it's different, it's not the same. I really think that things like this will change the way we understand art completely. <laughs> but of course, uh, yeah, it can be a little frustrating if it's not in the actual set of possibilities. <laughs> you talked about two influences that are very, very different. Painter Rousseau and Saul Lewitt, the conceptualist. Rousseau making these magical, realistic paintings of nature and of animals. And then Saul Lewitt, who's so structural and minimal and, and procedural. We have a kind of sweet in Brazil, goiabada com queijo, it's cheese with guava. I think they are like this, you know, they complement each other. And uh, I love the rationality that came from Saul Lewitt. And, uh, but it's not only that. One thing that I love about it, him, he talks about us giving up a little bit from our own subjectivity to allow other systems to bring things that we could never thought about doing. Many times I look at the outputs and uh, I'm totally conscious that I would never draw something like this if I was painting or if I was doing everything only by myself. Also remind me a lot of the medieval illustration and drawings that I, I also love because, you know, everything in the drawing is represented with the same clarity and linearity. If you have a tree, all the single leaves will be represented with the same amount of detail. At the same time, it's so colorful. Looking at the environment, he never traveled 
He was only knowing the nature from books and museums and trying to understand the structure that was there. The way that Rousseau brings the nature in representation is very schematized. And that's totally possible with programming languages. So the idea of uh, nature being uh, drawn by rules is just amazing. I think they just, you know, need to exist together in, in my mind. Yeah.